Kathy Wood. Kathy Wood has dumped out of a ton of Tesla stock and bought, surprisingly enough, Meta stock. Okay, I want to read through kind of what she's done here and kind of give my perspective and opinion on this. You know, these are two of my biggest positions, actually the two biggest positions I have in the public council. I want to give my some perspective on this whole situation from kind of a, a context of a shareholder of both stocks, right? And then I want to react to a, a little few minutes segment here from Fast Money that uh, happened here today, where essentially they're arguing back and forth about AI stocks in the future of AMD, NVIDIA. Uh, one of the gentlemen, Dan Nathan, makes a pretty darn big prediction about they're all going to crash okay and so i want to react to that one i thought that would be interesting so appreciate everybody joining me as always folks Twenty eight thousand eight hundred, i believe it's twenty eight thousand eight hundred plus subscribers now on this channel so appreciate everybody all-time highs all the time i appreciate y'all being here thanks so much folks if you would like to apply for my private group check out the description area down there if you would like to join my patreon you enjoy the content you want to support my content then do so on patreon that's linked in the description area you also get to see access to the moves i'm making each week in that portfolio and um so all that good stuff. Plus, be part of that Discord chat if you're interested. That's in the description area as well, okay? So, headline, Kathy Wood ARK dumps t- some Tesla NVIDIA stock while scooping up Meta shares. Kathy Wood's led ARK Investment Management on Monday sold a whopping stake in Tesla, possibly booking some lucrative profits as the stock has obviously surged this year, right? 100 plus percent. Funds operated by ARK sold over 393000 thousand shares of the EV maker at an estimated valuation of over $98 million based upon Monday's closing price. The sale was done via the flagship ARC Innovation ETF, ARKK, and ARC Autonomous Technology Robotics ETF, and the ARC Next Generation Internet ETF as well. Now, real quick here, before we go further, okay, what would what would Kathy Wood's justification be for this? Okay, because you're seeing her. She, you know, she always talks about Tesla and being so bullish on it, and then you see her sell ninety eight million dollars of Tesla stock, and it's like, what? Are, are you not bullish on Tesla? Like, what's going on here? Okay, Kathy Wood's justification of this would be the following: She would say, the reason I'm selling is to reposition the money into stocks that I feel is better um, in the short term here. Okay, that's what she would say. She say our conviction around Tesla is as high as it's ever been, but Tesla stock's gone up a lot, so we want to reposition some of that capital elsewhere. Okay, which I understand, but it's it's not the, always the best look when you're supposed to have this long, super long term horizon of five, ten years, and then you're dumping ninety eight million dollars of Tesla stock. It's just not a good look. Okay, and so as many times as she says that. I don't know how much people really buy it, and I think people just get frustrated by it, just to be honest, okay, about the whole situation. Woods funds have been on a buying spree since late last year when Tesla shares price was obviously depressed. I mean, Tesla stock went down to, I think at the lows, it was like $103 or something like that. It was insane, right? Tesla stock fell over like 70% last year. It was absolutely crazy, peak to trough. ARK's reduction of Tesla stake comes just ahead of the release of, obviously, inflation data, which obviously came out, and then the Federal Reserve's moves here over the next 24 hours or so. Tesla witnessed, obviously, a ton of good news. General Motors and uh, Ford obviously announced deals with GM. Also, it looks like uh, Tesla's EV adopt, uh, adapters and whatnot in, in, in their whole wave is like the wave of the future now at this point in time, okay? And so that was obviously good news. We covered that on the channel. But the surprising thing is here, right? Major Buy Woods Funds bought over 174,800 shares of Meta platforms on Monday at an estimated valuation of over $47 million. Now, it's shocking because Meta stock's up pretty much just as much as Tesla stock is. I mean, those ones are on a race to 300 bucks. Those ones are on a race to three hundred dollars. It's like who's going to reach three hundred first? Meta or Tesla? I had a poll actually in the side the private group recently inside the the private group's Discord chat, right? And I said, you know, who do you guys think? And I think Tesla slightly won that poll of uh, who who's going to be to uh, three hundred dollars first. And so this is very surprising, very surprising that you'd buy Meta stock. It it did, I mean it's never seemed like a Kathy Wood stock. Meta is such a great company. And obviously has a bright future, but it just never seemed like a Kathy Wood type stock. And the main reason is Meta just doesn't have that sort of revenue growth that supposedly Kathy Wood likes, right? Meta is obviously a cash flow machine. It doesn't seem like Kathy Wood really likes cash flow machine companies. No disrespect, but it doesn't seem like she likes those sort of companies. So Meta is just, I think it's a weird fit, and especially buying it when it's climbed just as much as Tesla, okay? Now, 
These are my two biggest positions in the public account. And not just my biggest positions, they're my biggest positions by far in the public account, right? I hold maybe 15 stocks or so, somewhere around there. Uh, yeah, I think it's around 15 stocks in the public account, somewhere around there, roughly, okay? And these are by far and away the two biggest positions. Almost a half a million dollars of that portfolio is in, t in Meta stock, right? Another $430,000 is in Tesla stock. Those two are always battling for who's, who's going to be the biggest position of uh, the public account, right? So my, my opinion and perspective on this is, do I think this is a smart move to swap out a Tesla into Meta, okay? I think it's a little iffy, okay? The thing is with Meta, it's always kind of an easy money stock, but it doesn't have the best long-term growth potential, obviously. That clearly goes to Tesla, right? Tesla clearly has that sort of revenue growth in that sort of long-term opportunity here and also growing off of a, let's say, a smaller base in something like a Meta. And so... It's it's an interesting move. I'm just like I'm I'm still blown away that she would do the move. I'm I'm blown away. Meta obviously much more attractive if you're going to look at something like a forward P, much more attractive. I think Meta also has a more compelling next two to three quarters in front of it in terms of EPS growth, where Tesla is going to have some really tough comps to comp against over the next two or three quarters. So I think I think in the short term. And it's where it's like, is Kathy Wood looking at the short term or long term? Because I will say, in the short term, I think Meta sets up better than Tesla. But over the next five years, who performs better, Tesla or Meta? That I have big questions about. I think there's definitely a potential where Tesla outperforms Meta over this next five years because they have significant, obviously, revenue growth opportunity over the coming years, whereas Meta just doesn't have that sort of opportunity. Like Meta can grow their revenues and continue to do well for this business, right, and continue to grow their net income at a faster clip than revenue, but can they grow as fast as, as Tesla? I just don't see that being realistic. And so, yeah, very strange move strange move by kathy Wood, you know but she makes some strange moves it just seems like this is more of a short-term play i wouldn't be surprised at all if she holds this meta position for the next six months and then dumps out of it wouldn't be surprised at all we'll see wouldn't be surprised don't be surprised if you see her sell all those shares six months nine months from now okay let me react to this segment from fast money here today arguing about ai stocks major prediction was made in this 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 little clip here I think this is pretty intriguing. So, uh, you know, the AMD price action. What? Come here. Okay, you're really <laughs> come here, come here, come here, come here. I saw that. I say? saw that real quickly. I'm just gonna be really quick. Okay. So, in the last three years, okay, AMD's revenues have gone. Okay. So, reference in case people don't follow Fast Money or whatnot. This is his man. This man, I believe, his name is Dan Nathan. Always bearish, especially. Oh gosh, man especially this past year or so, so dang bearish all the time. So it's important to understand that from context for understanding, like, is this somebody that's usually neutral, super bullish, super bearish? I mean, every single time he's pretty much super bearish, at least for the past year plus. I don't know about five years ago or 10 years ago, but I can tell you over the past year, super bearish. And I tell you, fast money in general has seemed to definitely lean bearish over this past, I would say, year. $7 billion to $23 billion last year, okay? Intel's have gone from about $80 billion to about $50 billion this year. NVIDIA's have gone from about $10 billion, you know, uh, you know, five years ago, and they're going to maybe do $50 billion. They're just shifting around, right? These are chips. Like, like, like all, you know, I'm just saying, okay, okay just, just think say. about this. This is market share sort of shift. So when she throws out, it's a $30 billion sort of market right now. I kind of believe that, okay? And then I'm not saying I don't believe anything she says. Hold on. Did his math make any sense there? L let's rewind this. I, I don't think his math made any dang sense here. $50 billion by the time we get to 2027. Everybody pull out your calculators and let's listen to this math. I don't think this makes sense. So what do we think of this, uh, you know, the AMD price action? What? Come here. Okay. I saw that. I saw that real quickly. I'm just gonna be really quick. Okay. So in the last three years, okay, AMD's revenues have gone from seven billion dollars to twenty-three billion dollars last year. Okay. Intel's have gone from about eighty billion to about fifty billion this year. Nvidia's have gone from about ten billion, you know, uh, you know, five years ago, and they're gonna maybe do fifty billion. That's still a huge growing pie. That's not just a market share shift. That is still a, a substantially big growing pie, okay, based upon the math there. 
just shifting around, right? These are chips. Like, like, like all, well, no, I'm just saying, okay, okay just think say, about this. This is market share sort of shift. So when she throws out, it's a $30 billion sort of market right now. I kind of believe that, okay? And then I'm not saying I don't believe anything she says. She's a genius and she's a great CEO. But $150 billion market, this is not incremental to what we have right here. I'm just pointing out that you have these market share shifts and there's winners and losers. And some have doubled their or tripled their revenue in three or four years, and then others have lost 35%, like Intel. You know what I mean? So well, and it's Intel not a zero. Like it, though. Yeah. And, and, and so, I mean, until today, you know, you start to hear about Intel, R, you know, ARM, and you think, you know, is this a place where Intel can finally start to catch up? Or um, the bottom line is Intel's multiple and its, its, its valuation really uh, tell you where there's been underperformance. What, what, what's going on in the picks and shovels and, and, and kind of, you know, the pans part of the business around NVIDIA, though, is, is I think, a market that we don't know the size of. And, and I think that's really what the difference is. And I think, you know, I, I'm not here to tell you NVIDIA is cheap, but I'm here to tell you that the growth rate that they're giving you uh, and the multi-quarter guidance and visibility they now have into their data center is something that, and we've said this, Karen said this, if they're giving you this number, you know they're going for this number. And, and it's, it's not even a question. So I don't want to say, I'm not going to say any of this is cheap. Semis have had a big run. But when I look at some of these companies, um, I, I think it's not a zero-sum game. I think the, the size of of the picks and shovels market is still unknown. Agree. Yeah, I, th I think it is a zero-sum game. I think that's the difference, and, and the pie will be absolutely much bigger. I totally agree 100% on, on market share. If anything, we've seen AMD show what you can do with mar you know, from this much market share to completely making Intel almost a an also-ran. So I, I, that's not to say it's not expensive. I just think the pie is bigger and will be growing bigger. I mean and the question is, what's an easier buy right now? Is it NVIDIA or is it AMD? And I think that's a fair good question of which one's a better buy. And it really depends upon, are you looking for the company that has proven their AI technology and it's like it's in the market in a massive way right now? If that's what you're playing after, then it's NVIDIA. If you're looking at more of a valuation story, then I think AMD is a little more compelling, right? So it really depends on what you want to weight as heavier, I guess you can say. Rate, Oracle talked about it, the rate of growth accelerating. And this number that uh, Lisa Sue threw out from 30 billion to 150 billion, I don't know, three and a half years, that's 50% CAGR. That's enormous. Not just for them, but I'm saying it's the whole yeah, industry, right? right? Yes, so yes. so the, my point about uh, like breaking those different names out is just they, they shift around, right? So if there's a KGAR that is like much, she's not saying it's 150 billion in incremental revenue. That, that's kind of my point here. And these are the sorts of conversations. Like I, I was going back and forth with a guy who was in the, in the fiber business in the late 90s. And he was telling me, this was on email, a guy named Mike, a brilliant guy. And he was telling me the things that they used to hear from Lucent and Nortel about demands for fiber that they were laying all over the world. They laid more like that you could get you to know, Mars and back, okay, in 1998 and 99 and 2000. And all those stocks went down 90%. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen here. It's the same psychology when you think that you were on the cusp of some sort of, you know, changing technology. There's double, triple ordering, all that sort of stuff. And the CEOs, it's their job to get everybody Before excited about their stocks customers. stocks fell, though. Before they got just cut, yeah. what happened to them? They went right. parabolic, just yeah. like these stocks are going. That's all I'm trying to tell you people right. here. That's Have at it. Keep buying them. They will go down as quickly which, as which they stocks, went off. At which some stocks point. are we talking about? All of them. All of what? NVIDIA, NVIDIA AMD. AMD. Oracle, uh, AWS, sure. Microsoft. Oracle, throw Oracle just started today. It may never so trade higher than its opening print today. But, but are we Again. talking about NVIDIA? Are we talking about AMD? I know you said all of them, but I mean, you know, the NVIDIA argument that, uh, again, is at least out there since those numbers is that... The so we can't just gloss over that prediction. I mean, it's an epic prediction, and it's one that'll age extremely poorly or extremely well, depending upon what, what plays out here. But... um. Yeah, I mean, it's a tough, it's certainly a tough prediction to make in, in terms of expecting all those stocks to crash and, and be down and out for all of eternity here because, I mean, it seems like we're, we're very early days in this kind of AI battle, right? And usually these, these chip cycles are several year cycles. I mean, you know, is it possible that this is only like a six month thing or a 12 month thing? Sure. But that's what we never see. Every time you get one of these big semiconductor moves, they last years sometimes it's a big boom for three years sometimes it's more like a five-year boom sometimes more of a seven ten year boom so i don't know that's a you know but the gentleman like i said he, he always leans bearish so his stance is going to be very bearish and that's a type of very bearish comment to make they're all going to crash right 
company that is growing 65% year over year is what they did based upon the visibility. That changes, a, you know, I, so NVIDIA is one thing. And again, picks and shovels. We talk about the, the retail side and all the garbage around all these companies that mention AI. I, I, I don't agree that they deserve a multiple. Um, but I think with, with AMD, who is significantly behind uh, you know, the fact that they got bit up may be what you're saying. So, Guy, I mean, do the bit where AMD reported about a month and a half ago the stock was trading at $80. AMD dollars. reported on May 3rd. <laughs> okay, the stock you. closed that day at 89 yeah. It was 10% lower in the aftermarket, justifiably so. The stock had run in the previous month or so. Valuation was a bit of a concern. Next day, they announced a relationship with Microsoft. They were going to make AI ch chips to compete with NVIDIA. Right. Stock has rallied 50% since. It's a $200 billion company. Now, I'll say this. It's a great company. Company, but this stock does not trade in a straight line. If we pull a chart up over the last couple of years, you see 25 to 40 percent moves both higher and lower in this name. And I just think it's gotten cool. ahead of itself. It doesn't mean none of these are doesn't mean they're not great companies. It means the stocks are a little ridiculous right now. There's a lot more fast money to come. Here's this. Yeah, you know, that's one of those things. The stocks are a little ridiculous right now. What are you basing it off of? You know, and that's the thing that frustrates me with a lot of these Wall Streeters. They say these sorts of comments, right? You know, it's all going to crash or these stocks are ridiculous right now. What are you basing it off of? Are you basing it off of fundamentals of companies? If fundamentals meaning revenues, future projected out revenues, future projected out margins for these sorts of products, net income. Are we saying because they've, the stock price has gone up a lot? You know, be very specific because it's very important. So viewers can have context of what you're really meaning there in, in terms of what's ridiculous, right? And there's a scenario where NVIDIA goes to... $1,500 over the next few years, and then it crashes down to 700 bucks, right? Does that mean that Dan Nathan was right because then the stock crashed? <laughs> like These are things we all have to consider, right? I mean, there's been a lot of bears in the market saying NVIDIA was overvalued and deserved to crash when it went to 150, and then when it went to 200, and then when it went to 250 and 300, now the stock's 400 plus. I mean, are they going to be saying the same thing when it's 800? Probably. 1,000? 1,500? You know what I mean? And so at some point in time, uh, you know, you have to either admit defeat there or you have to change your stance. Kind of one of the two. Or, or you can stay with it and stay with the conviction. But, you know, as things tick along and business builds, it gets harder to make that prediction again and again and again, right? No different than the guy that was making the prediction of Tesla was going to go to 60 bucks. He, he was saying, 60, you know, Tesla would be at $60 right now. Tesla's at like $260 right now. So, you know, that needs to be said. I appreciate everybody joining me as always, folks. Thanks for being subscribed. Always an entertaining market out there, man. Always uh, the bulls and bears are always fighting. I appreciate y'all being here. Focus on making money out there. If you need help understanding this whole game, Apply for the private group. That's in the description area down there. If you're looking to support my content, do so on Patreon. That's in the description area as well. Plus, you get to see the moves I'm making in the market. Much love and have a great day.